Americans consume 50 billion plastic water bottles a year. You can still vote early today at any of the city's 13 early voting polling places. The Washington Monument is reopening its doors on Monday. At 100,000 tons of rock, the structure was damaged due to an earthquake that happened three years ago. Employers, colleagues, and other unintended audiences may still be able to get access to it. Limited. However, Fairfax and D.C. water are saying tap water is just as good. Imagine a D.C. resident parks here but forgets to pay the meter. Instead of that hefty ticket going to its rightful owner, it's going to residents in places such as Virginia and Maryland with the same license plate numbers but different makes and models. A new bill could change that. While the children are being interviewed in here, the team that investigates and prosecutes child abuse are watching next door. Technology is quickly becoming the norm in today's society. Social media websites are growing in numbers throughout the world. According to a law review article, 30 billion pieces of content are shared on Facebook each month. And it's estimated that users of Twitter compose an average of 190 million tweets per day. And even though your Twitter, Facebook, or other social media sites may be set to private, employers, colleagues, and other unintended audiences may still be able to get access to it. For Adrian Mason, this incident not only happened once, but twice. I've had uh, maybe like two people, you know, use my photo on other sites. First, I thought, what am I going to do? I was very upset about it um, because um, you never want, you know, someone else using your photos. And in terms of employment, some higher administrators say the social network profiles, whether public or private, of future employees should reflect the job they want. You can set your settings to be really private. Uh, that's a real mistake because for employers, it says, huh, what do they have to hide? your public kind of public persona you know needs to kind of reflect those values you're looking for in your future work environment. Mason's advice to the younger generation is to be careful what you put on social media. Just be mindful of that because that's very important. For District Wire News, I'm Marie Daniel. Laughs, good food and even a few selfies are being taken for a delicious occasion. And Pizza and Dreams for Kids collaborate for the second annual pizza making event. Executive Director Glenda Fu says this is one of many events that Dreams for Kids sponsors, helping empower children with physical and mental disabilities to unite with their peers and realize their full potential. It's to encourage these kids to reach for the stars and show them that other people in their community want to help them reach their goals. This is Richard Brown's first pizza event and decided to get the works for his personalized pizza. Sauce, cheese, pepper, I mean, pepperoni, make it, that's it. Richard's mother says she looks forward to the next event and is happy her son let her take a quick bite of his masterpiece. It was great. <laughs> Coming back for more. And Pizza and Dreams for Kids say having events such as these helps build community with the children and foster relationships with each other. So we've had a great we had a great time with these guys the first time around. So we when they asked us again, we were like, we'd love to have the opportunity to do it. And uh, it's really cool. We really enjoy being in here. We enjoy making pizzas. We enjoy engaging with everybody. Nearly 25 children showed off their pizza making skills and we're excited to test out the results. For District Wire News, I'm Ray Daniel. It's an organization that is teaching young students growth development in a tasty way. Brain Food, a nonprofit youth development organization, uses food, cooking, and nutrition to teach life skills to teenagers in the D.C. area. Program Director for Brain Food, Karina Gravasio, says they have the privilege every year to work with nearly 250 students and says any teen is eligible to enroll in the program. So we're open to disconnected youth who are not currently attending school or in classes. Uh, we're also open to teens in public schools, public charter schools, and even private schools. So um, we are open to anyone who is of high school age. Within the organization, there are four core programs that students can choose from. 
which are either twice a week after school or every day for five weeks during the summer. Different activities include hands-on cooking classes, field trips, and community service projects. Students often return to brain food after graduation. Gravasio says she enjoys seeing familiar faces coming back to the program and encourages them to still continue to cook beyond their teenage years. I think for us it's kind of a vote of confidence of like what happens in high school doesn't just have to end. That that like sense of building community and that leadership and feeling like you can come back to this place where you were welcomed and accepted and valued, like it, it's really real. <laughs> and they're going off to college and they want to come back here. Gravasio says it's an organization that will continue to empower youth through food. For District Wire News, I'm Marie Daniel.